This is the 90s Millennial Nostalgia Iceberg. Millennials like myself are in a unique situation as we experienced our childhood in the analog days before many of the life-changing digital technologies that we take for granted like cell phone and internet. But we were just young enough to still develop in our early adulthoods with the beginnings of these technologies. Most of these entries near the top are still relevant today but were introduced or held their heyday in the 90s and the further down we go, the more obscure the entries get, so let's get into it. Eminem. Starting with this musical artist, who is still very popular today, but in the 90s, Marshall Mathers was just coming out. His obscene and vulgar lyrics on top of a notable rapping ability was enough to bring him to the mainstream. Luckily, he hit the scene before Twitter and the PC culture we live in now because his racy lyrics would have a tough time existing in today's society. Pokemon. Another incredibly popular entry, perhaps even more popular today than it was then. However, Pokemon had a special place in my childhood because like many of the other entries, this entry took on mainstream status. It was cool to like Pokemon, and even less nerdy kids would have Pokemon cards or the games. And on top of this, games were still fairly new and the Pokemon games set the bar incredibly high for future games to come. South Park almost certainly even more popular today. However, in the 90s, staying up late to watch the rude and crudely drawn animations, for me anyway, was a special treat. Their subtle alien fascination resonated with me and drew me in as well. And their popularity was not established yet, so parents weren't exactly aware of the subjects and language used on the show. Power Rangers. This is another entry that may be just as popular, if not more so than it was in the 90s, but again, it was something novel and exciting at the time. We still had the original cast of the American Power Rangers, and there were hit movies coming out that hit the mainstream. It also spawned a catchphrase that can still be heard today, it's Morphin Time. Dragon Ball Z. Another titan of popularity is the Dragon Ball Saga. However, back in the 90s, DBZ on Toonami was the epitome of cool for many teenagers. Seeing Goku turn Super Saiyan for the first time was the talk of American school systems. And kids all over the world could unite in their collection of chi to power up their spirit bombs. Will Smith. While he is still a household name, he became a household name in the 90s. After The Fresh Prince of Bel Air ended, Will went on a tirade with a series of massive hit movies. Men in Black, Wild Wild West, Independence Day, and Bad Boys. On top of this, he had two hit records, Big Willie Style and Willinium. Both of them were bumped quite a bit in my home growing up. Tamagotchi. These little electronic pets are just the first of the electronic devices wave that hit during the 90s. The marketing for these things must have been tremendous because it felt like almost every kid had one. It truly demonstrates how easily people were amused in this time. No, we didn't have pet rocks, instead we had pet pixels. Malls. Once upon a time, we had chains of stores all linked together in a public place for people to visit. Although their popularity was beginning to wane from the 80s, malls were still very prevalent in the 90s. And it was even a popular hangout spot for many people, unlike the ghost towns that we see today. Marilyn Manson. While I didn't start enjoying his music until my late teens, his presence was still very notable. His hot topics, obscene image, and intelligent persona were enough to catapult this individual into the mainstream of the 90s. I actually saw him live in concert and it was a great show. Furby. These creepy little things must have taken a note from the Tamagotchi marketing team because these things were massively popular as well. I think my mom still has one of these things and I just remember the NSYNC versus Backstreet Boys. This is a rivalry that will go down in the history books. Boy band v boy band. We clearly know that the Backstreet Boys was a superior band. However, NSYNC, of course, had a superior individual with Justin Timberlake. And I want to give an honorable mention to another boy band, Hanson. Flash player. Flash games and animation from middle school and high school were simply on another level. So many memes that are used today originate or were inspired by the products of Flash creators and users from the 90s. MySpace Top 8 Before TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, we had MySpace. It's seen as the red-headed, forgotten stepchild of today's social media, but once upon a time, it was a very serious and stressful ordeal to manage your Top 8 Friends panel that was featured on your profile page. Relationships were made and broken by this placement. 
I can definitely see how this much pressure on youth could have psychological consequences like we're seeing in children today from modern social media. OG Space Jam Alright, so we have the new Space Jam, which I haven't taken the time to see yet, but the original with Michael Jordan was a cultural phenomenon. It was massively popular, and it was seen everywhere, and it helped to catapult the following entry. The Bulls This entry is really synonymous with Michael Jordan as he was the determining factor. Nevertheless, it was a team effort. At their height, the Bulls made basketball and the NBA cool and popular within the mainstream for the first time, and this expanded beyond America. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Dennis Rodman were no longer just professional athletes, they became top-tier celebrities and icons. Beavis and Butthead Much like South Park, Beavis and Butthead helped to create a genre of adult animations that would thrust them into America's cultural lexicon. I remember my dad showing them to me at a very early age, watching them upstairs at my grandmother's house on a tiny little TV with him. I will probably always remember that. Care Bears Care Bears were another popular cartoon, but for an entirely different demographic. I remember this appearing on the cartoon show block that aired before I went to school. Even though being called a Care Bear would eventually become a derogatory term, it got that way due to its immense popularity to begin with. Monica Lewinsky Even though I was too young to comprehend the situation at the time, the 90s were still an interesting time period for politics in America with the Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky scandal. This is another situation that I think would have vastly different outcomes if it had been committed in today's politically correct society. New Original Movies Before we get into a cluster of movies, I want to touch on this subject which is a blanket reference to movies being almost entirely new and original stories, unlike today where we see a plethora of spin-offs, sequels, reboots, and reimaginings. And ironically, many of these modern adaptations are based off 90s media. Forrest Gump Mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. Never know what you're gonna get. I remember doing an impression of this as a child, making my grandfather crack up every time I did it. I wasn't old enough to appreciate the depth of this film, but I still remember how popular it was from its presence. Michael Jackson While the height of popularity for this artist was in the 80s, the 90s was faced with the beginnings of his decline with the allegations made against him. I was never much interested in his music as a child, but I remember this being a big deal in my youth. O.J. Simpson Trial Again, I was really too young to understand what was going on in the case, but I do remember sitting in the living room while my family was watching the case. I was far too engrossed in whatever my childhood was at the time. The Sandlot This movie had a lot of mystique to me as a child. It had aspects of the carefree childhood, fostering competitiveness in team games, and a bit of horror with that giant dog. I remember seeing this as a child thinking that dogs really got that massive and it probably startled me more than it should have. Hit Me Baby One More Time Britney Spears seemed to be a cultural sensation overnight. I remember getting these weird, unfamiliar feelings every time I saw her on posters and TV. I couldn't quite explain it at the time, but looking back at it now, I know exactly what it was. Spice Girls Unlike Britney Spears, I actually enjoyed the music of the Spice Girls when I was young. But just like with Britney Spears, I rather enjoyed the visual appearance of the singers for some reason, particularly Posh Spice. This band was absolutely massive at the time, spawning a movie that I remember enjoying unironically. I was a weird kid. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles While I don't remember much of a fascination for the turtles myself, I remember all of the pictures I had where I had something turtle themed around me, be it toys, cups, plates, or even blankets. Back to the Future While the first two films actually came out in the 80s, it still played a significant role in my youth. It was a fun and magical world that dabbled on future and futuristic technologies, and that's always been one of my favorite subjects. AIM AOL Instant Messenger I still remember my original screen name and password. My username was IamDabomb12, and my password was Goku14. And don't tell anybody, but I was only 11 at the time of making it, but that extra bump to 12 made me way cooler. Magazines So before YouTube and Google, magazines were my go-to source for discovering everything that is new and great. 
Anytime I went anywhere with my parents, I would immediately ask if I could go to, first, the electronics section if there was one, otherwise I would request to go to the magazines where I could get glimpses of what was up and coming. Beanie Babies. The height of their craze was before the internet, and anything that gained popularity to that level seemed so much larger than life. Lisa Frank. 90% of the girls in school had folders and other school supplies with these colorful and whimsical designs. I had to look to see if there was any show or form of media related to the designs, but apparently it was just a business savvy woman appealing to younger demographics with her appealing aesthetic. Titanic. This movie really lived up to its name. Even though I was far from the intended demographic of the movie, it still had a very cultural impact on me and the society at large. Floppy Disks Before the thumb drive, before even the CD-ROM, we had the floppy disk. 1.44 entire megabytes of storage capacity, which was more than enough room for most projects that we were tasked with at the time. Music Television the M in MTV is surprising, considering what the channel has become known for today. I remember countless hours watching music videos on the channel. Even in my teenage years, I would let MTV play in the background while I stayed up late playing Diablo 2. You've got mail. Ah yes, that exciting, dopamine-inducing sound clip that you received when you logged on. Before we came inundated with alerts from our cell phones and social media, this was about as close as we got to the feeling we receive when we get that text message from a friend. And AOL was all the rage in these days. ASL? The internet was so much more compact in the 90s. While some people were able to see what the internet would become, most people, like myself, were very content with the ability to just chat with other people from around the world through various online chat rooms. I remember every day after school I would hop on virtualkiss.com where I would talk to my friends and, dare I say, internet girlfriends. ASL was a common introduction in these popular chat rooms asking for people's age, sex, and location. Before cell phones. The cell phone has become so ingrained into our everyday being that it is basically incorporated onto our person. It has become the first thing I recite every time I leave the house, phone, keys, wallet, okay we're good. But once upon a time, cellular telephones were a humorously large and expensive device that very few people had. Cassette Mixtapes We've seen custom mixtapes evolve several times since this era. Having a mixtape of the songs you wanted required you to sit by a stereo with a tape player, ready to hit the record button when your desired song came on the radio. It was an arduous process that would often be interrupted by the radio DJ before the end of the song. Of course, things changed entirely with MP3s and the introduction of peer-to-peer -peer services, and things changed once again with the introduction of streaming services like YouTube and other common services available on the internet today. Hook. This is one of the most magical films for 90s kids. Robin Williams cemented himself as a household name in this Peter Pan film. In general, this movie was a super fun adventure for kids even today, however being so new and novel at the time, it was a very nostalgic film for many of us. Muppet Babies While I was born too late in the millennial age range to really remember this show, the older millennials will probably remember this show from their childhood. The Oregon Trail Many American schools in the 90s had computers with this fun game that could be classified as educational. Interestingly enough, people that grew up playing this game have been given their own classification known as Xennials or the Oregon Trail Generation. I also want to give an honorable mention to another early computer game that I loved called The Secret Island of Dr. Quandary. Reading Rainbow Unfortunately, I wasn't too interested in this show when I was younger, so I never appreciated the stories being told. However, this animation and the host will always be something I remember from growing up. Goosebumps. Like I alluded to earlier, print medias like books and magazines held a more prominent role in our society before the internet. In my small circle of friends, Goosebumps books were almost seen as a social status. In fact, I admit I didn't even read all the Goosebumps books I had. I did appreciate their art and the creepy aesthetic to them. They definitely played a significant part in my elementary school days. Animorphs. As I got older, this book series captivated me. Fellow teenagers that are granted unreal abilities from a friendly alien race to band together and defeat an evil alien race 
Sign me up. I really did enjoy reading these books, and I even enjoyed the Nickelodeon TV series. The concept of extraterrestrial races has always fascinated me. That's why I've made several videos on them already. The Macarena. This song and dance is still seen today, but when it came out, it was absolutely massive. It was seen and heard everywhere. It could be seen as the YMCA dance of this generation. The original Pog. So before Twitch took over and modernized the term, Pog had a very different meaning. These milk caps became known as Pogs. The game has existed for generations, but with some successful marketing, it blew up in popularity, and nearly every kid in America had some of these. 16-bit games. Sure, we had the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation in our generation, but the bulk of my developmental childhood stages involved my grandfather's Nintendo Entertainment System and my own Super Nintendo. And games back then had such an elusive feeling to them. We couldn't simply hop online and learn everything about the game within seconds. We were very limited in our ability to learn more about games. So in our minds, these games had limitless potential to them. It was a magical and wondrous feeling that's really hard to replicate in this age. Video rental stores. I remember long weeks of early mornings and long drawn out days of education, but Fridays would eventually come around along with my inevitable question to one or both of my parents, can I rent a game? I wasn't always lucky, but when I was, it was always a treat. And depending on when you got to the store, your selection of available games was limited. So if you wanted to ensure you get the popular titles, you needed to get there as quickly after school as possible. Of course, the rest of the family were more interested in the next entry. Be Kind, Rewind. This was the mantra during the days of video rentals for VHS tapes. When you finished watching the film, the physical tape that the media was stored on needed to be rewinded back to watch the film again. So oftentimes you would rent a movie and upon putting it into your VCR, you were forced to spend several minutes rewinding it just to watch it from the beginning. But every so often you would rent a movie that was already back at the beginning of the tape. Hmm, good times. Arcades. In an earlier entry we talked about malls, and many of these buildings were sections dedicated entirely to arcade games with these ancient change machines. Some of my fondest memories with my father were him standing behind me at arcades, cheering me on while I just slammed and spammed the buttons. Lucky Rabbit's Foot. There were a number of cheap and unique gadgets and toys that were often used as incentives or prizes for various events or challenges. Oftentimes, I would see these things used for such occasions. Trolls Dolls. These little things were first created in 1959, but they reached the height of their popularity in the 90s. Looking back on it, it kind of amazes me that these things were as popular as they were. Yo quiero Taco Bell. This commercial was an absolute phenomenon across America. Our country was in the height of a burger fascination for fast food, but this commercial came along and launched Taco Bell and this commercial into pop culture. Upon researching, I found out that the dog in the commercial was actually a female dog with a male voice actor who loosely based the voice on Ren and Stimpy. Bop It. This is one of those toys that would incite some of the fiercest and longest lasting competitions within families. The issue I experienced was my inability to claim the high scores myself, as my sister would always insist that she tied my record. AOL Trial Discs. You could walk into a store and see a large display with a bin full of these discs for free. I think it would be safe to say that these bins filled with these discs were often more toys than anything else. The concept of this technology being free was fascinating to me as a child, even though I had no idea what they really were. Balancing Bird Toy Occasionally in school there were some exclusive rewards or opportunities that would grant you this amazing little device. I remember seeing the kids sitting at their desks spinning that little bird with glee. Y2K There was a genuine worry in the 90s that when the year 2000 rolled around, the internal clocks of computers would be unable to compute the rollover into the following year. People thought missiles would launch, explosions would occur, and power grids would be lost. Many people believed it was a true apocalypse scenario. I was too young to understand and comprehend the implications if that were the case, 
Luckily, I was old enough to have an existential crisis for 2012. No GPS. My first few years of driving were among the worst, not even due to the driving part of it, but because GPS was not a thing yet. If I wanted to travel somewhere new, I would be forced to find directions via friends and eventually Yahoo Maps. We needed to manually write down each turn and for how long we'd be on the road. And even that was a blessing. Early millennials and older generations know the true horror of navigating a trip with only a roadmap. Tom Green Before we had the live action slapstick comedies like Jackass, we had the roots of them with The Tom Green Show. While he had a particular niche audience, I remember it being edgy and more adult feeling than most shows. Carmen Sandiego In response to America's alarming lack of geographic knowledge, this show was developed to educate children in a fun and interactive manner. The show became super popular with a banger of an intro song. Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Walkmans. Before having the world's wealth of knowledge and entertainment in our pocket, we had to carry around these things just so we could listen to 12 different songs. And earbuds were not even a thing yet, but we were happy enough with these bulky wraparound headphones. Angel Fire. This company offered free website design, so it quickly became synonymous with amateur websites made for first-time designers. And all of the sites made had a particular feel and aesthetic that was pretty unique to itself and its time. Dinosaurs. This wacky show had a seriously eerie and somewhat off-putting vibe to it, especially to me as a child. Apparently, it had some very adult undertones and topics, especially with their series finale. This was the catchphrase for one of the main characters in the show Full House. During the height of its popularity, you would often hear people using this phrase in their daily lives. The Olsen Twins Speaking of Full House, these girls got their first appearance in the show. However, the height of their childhood acting careers was reached after the show, and they were everywhere. These two achieved mega stardom before they were even teenagers. We can only imagine the psychological ramifications they faced because of this. Corded phones. Landlines are very rare to see outside of businesses these days, but in the 90s it was common to see multiple home phones stationed throughout the house that were limited to that room only due to their corded nature. Luckily, cordless phones eventually became commonplace, allowing you to take your private conversations out of the living room. X-Files. The theme song alone was enough to make an impact on me. I was definitely too young at the time to appreciate them, but upon entering my 20s, I enjoyed watching the entire series and I eagerly awaited the new seasons upon their arrival. But in my childhood, this show implanted my childhood fear and fostered my adult fascination with extraterrestrials. KB Toys I was never super interested in toys as I was a games and electronics person, but I do remember my parents buying me a Power Rangers toy from KB Toys if I got my ears pierced without hesitation. It was an exchange I was willing to begrudgingly commit to. Electronics Boutique Now this was my jam. I remembered loving going to this store every time we went in the mall. We would very rarely buy things, especially the expensive games, but I loved to look at the guides for the video games that I was interested in. Sometimes I would even request to purchase one of the thick guides for many of the games I didn't even have, simply just to read them cover to cover, soaking up as much of the game as I could. Dial-up internet. Those who grew up in this age will never forget the sound of connecting to the internet. While many people may suffer or cringe at hearing this sound, I actually hear it and have good feelings associated with it. Much like the Pavlovian response for dogs salivating when they think they're about to get food, I would get excited knowing that the endless world of the internet was almost at my fingertips, and how easy it was to forget that the phone line was being blocked up while using the internet. Bubble Tape these were made in the late 80s, but due to their unique design, packaging, and marketing, they became massively popular. And I have to give a notable honorable mention to Big League Chew, which I'd have to say I preferred anyway. Jock Jams 
Without the ease of access to creating your own mixtapes, we had certain mixtapes reach massive popularity during the 90s. Another vastly popular mixtape series during the 90s was, now that's what I call music, Bill Nye. One of the first actors to help make science cool, many children loved this show and I think it's safe to say that he helped pave the way for many people to become STEM students and helping the world in various ways. And in the same vein, I think Mr. Rogers deserves a shout out too for helping to create a loving and positive outlook in many youths. Where's Waldo? Originally known as Where's Wally, this book series was massively popular in the 90s. It was a great time sink for kids, searching through the pages for that guy throughout the sea of red hearings and lookalikes. Pagers. One stage of technology before the modern cell phone was the pager. To me, this became synonymous with upper-class business folk that needed to be reached at a moment's notice. We would pretend that we were bigwigs that needed pagers because of our elevated importance. Talkboy. What was originally a toy prop for Home Alone 2 became a tremendous success in the toy market. They couldn't even keep up with the demand and even spawned a feminine successor, the Talk Girl. Did I do that? This was another pop culture reference that originates from the defining character Urkel in Family Matters. That character served as the inspiration for the funny nerd trope that's commonly seen in shows like Big Bang Theory. One Button Mice I'm very biased towards Windows and PC, but much of this bias derives from my contempt for Macintosh's one button mouse that I used during my days in elementary school. Though I didn't mind it at the time, simply because I didn't know any better. Yo-yos. It's hard to imagine such a thing becoming popular now, but once upon a time, yo-yos were an insatiable craze. Everybody could walk the dog, but only the elite could rock the baby. OG Game Boy. This bulky gray box worked hand in hand to help make Nintendo the titan of industry it is today. While I only remember playing Tetris on this platform, its predecessors were the grounds for other gaming titans. The Library Card Catalog. Before modern computers and internet, reading books from libraries was a hardship. Filing cabinets full of small cards were used to catalog the library's books, and it made finding and fetching your desired book an interesting ordeal. The introduction of digital catalogs probably eliminated half the need for librarians. TGIF. This sitcom block ran on ABC throughout most of the 90s. It stood for Thank Goodness It's Friday. It featured a number of family-friendly sitcoms like Full House and Family Matters, among others. The acronym superseded it and became commonplace. TGIF was the YOLO of the 90s. OG Netflix. Before Netflix and Chill, Netflix had a much different format. Members would rent videos via mail and await the arrival of their coveted media of choice. Magic Eye Books. These books were a kind of hit or miss in my childhood. These unique books involved you looking at these designs in a particular manner, allowing you to see an optical illusion. Some people were completely unable to do it, or simply too impatient to see the hidden image. Nevertheless, it was an interesting series of books. Yakback. This little device was similar to the Talkboy in that it recorded sounds, however it didn't use cassette tapes. This device allowed users to record up to 6 seconds of audio and play it back. The premise is simple, but like many things on this iceberg, great marketing campaigns made this toy tremendously successful. The True Story of Three Little Pigs This children's book was a parody of the Three Little Pigs as told from the Big Bad Wolf's point of view. Between the witty story and the appealing artistic style, it became incredibly popular. And the style of retelling a story from the antagonist's point of view became popular with shows like Wicked doing the same thing for The Wizard of Oz. Another children's book that had a very similar vibe was The Stinky Cheese Man and other fairly stupid tales. Yikes Pencils. These school supplies would eventually become enigmatic emblems of the 90s, a vintage staple of nostalgia for the millennials that grew up with these products. Pizza Hut Cups. The local Pizza Hut had two things that I will never forget. One was the set of arcades, there was Cruisin' USA and some other fighting game I don't remember, and the other thing I'll always remember is that red restaurant tumbler cup. 
That cup was always there when you were fortunate enough to have an outing at the Hut of Pizza. Maze Screensaver Everybody remembers the square bouncing around screensaver, but even more impactful was the maze screensaver. This thing would briefly captivate the attention of countless people throughout the 90s. Silly Putty Eggs These things were seen everywhere in this era. That familiar red egg cracked in half, holding the malleable putty? I still think I can even remember the smell of it. Simpler Times Life was truly simpler in the 90s. There didn't seem to be nearly as much social pressure as we face today. Part of me thinks that that may be because I was still very young and I didn't have the responsibilities of being an adult yet, but it was at least partially because of the lack of modern technology that connects us all so seamlessly today. So I ask you, were times simpler because we were young, or because we weren't so ingrained in the technological and social pressures that come along with it? Let me know your thoughts.